Hello, everyone, and welcome to my podcast. Today, I wanted to do a reading of the Sin Sin Ming, the first recorded Zen writing written by the third patriarch of Zen Buddhism, which was founded by Bodhidharma. And this is Sang Zan. So he was the disciple of the disciple of Bodhidharma, the third of the Zen patriarchs. And so I've actually done a reading of this before. And I'll put the link in the descriptions. And I've went through each page and given detailed commentary a couple of years back, which I will also include if anyone's interested. But since it's such a powerful book and it means so much to me, I really wanted to read it again here. So I just encourage you to maybe get into a meditative awareness, a meditative state of mind. And so you can really let these verses sink into you. And this is basically, it's on the nature of reality. It's on the nature of enlightenment. It's on the nature of boundlessness, right? It's a spiritual practice. Each line of this, Ramdas, my teacher said, could be studied for years, right? Could be applied for a lifetime. So it's a very powerful text. So I just encourage you to sit quietly, or if you're in the car, just take a few deep breaths, kind of try to tune in with yourself here. Pray that the divine wisdom in this text be revealed to you. It begins, the great way is not difficult for those not attached to preferences. When neither love nor hate arises, all is clear and undisguised. Separate by the smallest amount, however, and you are as far from it as heaven is from earth. If you wish to know the truth, then hold to no opinions for or against anything. To set up what you like against what you dislike is the disease of the mind. When the fundamental nature of things is not recognized, the mind's essential peace is disturbed to no avail. The way is perfect, as vast space is perfect, where nothing is lacking and nothing is in excess. Indeed, it is due to our grasping and rejecting that we do not know the true nature of things. Live neither in the entanglements of outer things, nor in ideas or feelings of emptiness. Be serene and at one with things, and erroneous views will disappear by themselves. When you try to stop activity to achieve quietude, your very effort fills you with activity. As long as you remain attached to one extreme or another, you'll never know oneness. Those who do not live in the single way cannot be free in either activity or quietude, in assertion or denial. Deny the reality of things and you miss their reality. Assert the emptiness of things and you miss their reality. The more you talk and think about it, the further you wander from the truth. So cease attachment to talking and thinking and there's nothing you will not be able to know. To return to the root is to find the essence, but to pursue appearances or enlightenment is to miss the source. To awaken even for a moment is to go beyond appearances and emptiness. Changes that seem to occur in the empty world we make real only because of our ignorance. Do not seek for the truth, only cease to cherish opinions. Do not remain in a dualistic state. Avoid such easy habits carefully. If you attach even to a trace of this and that, of right and wrong, the mind essence will be lost in confusion. Although all dualities arise from the one, do not be attached even to ideas of this one. 
When the mind exists undisturbed in the way, there is no objection to anything in the world. And when there is no objection to anything, things cease to be in the old way. When no discriminating attachment arises, the old mind ceases to exist. Let go of things as separate existences, and mind too vanishes. Likewise, when the thinking subject vanishes, so too do the objects created by the mind. The arising of other gives rise to self. Giving rise to self generates other. Knowing these seeming two as facets of the one fundamental reality. In this emptiness, these two are really one, and each contains all phenomena. If not comparing, nor attached to, refined and vulgar, you will not fall into judgment and opinion. The great way is embracing and spacious. To live in it is neither easy nor difficult. Those who rely on limited views are fearful and irresolute. The faster they hurry, the slower they go. To have a narrow mind and to be attached to getting enlightenment is to lose one's center and go astray. When one is free from attachment, all things are as they are, and there is neither coming nor going. When in harmony with the nature of things, your own fundamental nature, you will walk freely and undisturbed. However, when the mind is in bondage, the truth is hidden and everything is murky and unclear. And the burdensome practice of judging brings annoyance and weariness. What benefit can be derived from attachment to distinctions and separations? If you wish to move in the one way, do not dislike the worlds of senses and ideas. Indeed, to embrace them fully is identical with true enlightenment. The wise person attaches to no goals, but the foolish person fetters himself or herself. There is one dharma without differentiation. Distinctions arise from the clinging needs of the ignorant. To seek mind with the discriminating mind is the greatest of mistakes. Rest and unrest derive from illusion. With enlightenment, attachment to liking and disliking ceases. All dualities come from ignorant inference. They are like dreams, phantoms, hallucinations. It is foolish to try to grasp them. Gain and loss, right and wrong, finally abandon all such thoughts at once. If the eye never sleeps, all dreams will naturally cease. If the mind makes no discriminations, the 10,000 things are as they are of single essence. To realize the mystery of this one essence is to be released from all entanglements. When all things are seen without differentiation, the one self essence is everywhere revealed. No comparisons or analogies are possible in this causeless, relationless state of just this one. When movement stops, there is no movement, and when no movement, there is no stopping. When such dualities cease to exist, oneness itself cannot exist. To this ultimate state, no law or description applies. For the realized mind at one with the way, all self-centered striving ceases. Doubts and irresolutions vanish, and the truth is confirmed in you. 
With a single stroke, you're freed from bondage. Nothing clings to you, and you hold to nothing. All is clear, empty, and self-illuminating, with no need to exert the mind. Here, thinking, feeling, understanding, and imagination are of no value. In this world, as it really is, there is neither self nor other than self. To know this reality directly is possible only through practicing non-duality. When you live this non-separation, all things manifest the one and nothing is excluded. Whoever comes to enlightenment, no matter when or where, realizes personally this fundamental source. This Dharma truth has nothing to do with big or small, with time and space. Here a single thought is as 10,000 years. Not here, not there, but everywhere, always right before your eyes. Infinitely large and infinitely small, no difference, for definitions are irrelevant and no boundaries can be discerned. So likewise with existence and non-existence. Don't waste your time in arguments and discussions attempting to grasp the ungraspable. Each thing reveals the one. The one manifests as all things. To live in this realization is not to worry about perfection or non-perfection. To put your trust in the heart-mind is to live without separation. And in this non-duality, you are one with your life source. Words, words, the way is beyond language. For in it there is no yesterday, no tomorrow, no today. Maybe sit here for a few moments in your wisdom mind contemplating this hair and as you go into your day. This is a text to be reread, re-studied, re-listened to. It's a spiritual practice to work with such a text. Taking three more breaths here before continuing into your meditation or into your day. Inhaling through the nose. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. One more inhale. Exhale. If you want to hear a detailed commentary on the various verses, I've listed that in the links below, and I may do some new ones in the future. Thank you for joining me. Namaste.